Hey, welcome back to my studio. If you're new here, my name's Morgan and I make all things party and event. And today I wanna to show you how to put together this organic balloon arch. These are air-filled balloons and I'll be putting them onto an arch frame. So follow along and I'll show you step-by-step -step how to make this. Today I'm making a 21 foot long organic balloon arch. And the first thing you need to figure out is how many balloons you're going to need for this project. Whenever I'm doing an organic garland or an arch, I figure it's going to need eight to 10 balloons per foot. And that number is gonna be divvied up between my five inch, 11 inch and 16 inch balloons with the majority of this arch being comprised of 11 inch balloons. Because of the scale of this arch, I'm gonna be building it in four separate sections. And each section is made up of purple, white, and silver metallic balloons. And my first set of balloons is 16 inches. And three of these are gonna be purple, and two of these are gonna be white in this section. Now purple is the primary color of this arch, so I have twice as many purple 11 inch balloons as I do white and silver. So I've got nine white, nine silver, and 19 purple 11 inch balloons for this section. I also plan to include three small clusters that are made of four balloons each, and the purple and white are five inches, but I could only get my silver right now in seven inch, but I'll inflate those all to the same size, and we'll add those to the arch once we go to set it up. Finally, I'll be using three to four of these white 260 balloons to tie this entire section together. So this makes up one five to six foot long section of my arch, and I'll have four of these in total. I'll be inflating and assembling my balloons one section at a time. So this is one section's worth of 11 and 16 inch balloons. I'm using my electric balloon inflator with two nozzles on it. And to make this process go faster, I'm gonna inflate two balloons at a time and tie those together right away. So I'm gonna put one balloon on each of the nozzles and then press down on the trigger nozzle. And I'm gonna fill these balloons until they're a nice pear shape. Once they're fully inflated, I'm gonna slowly let air out and then press them down against the table until they're a nice round shape. In general, these are gonna be between seven and nine inches in size, um, but I'm not going to be using any balloon sizers today. Next, I'm gonna take the nozzles of those two balloons and wrap them around twice and tie them into a simple knot. And this is gonna put them directly into a pair and it's gonna save us a lot of time when it comes to tying knots. And I'll be doing this with all the balloons you see on the table, so everything is gonna be put into pairs. Now I'm gonna inflate not only my 11 inch balloons, but I'm gonna put combinations of my 16 and 11 inch balloons together. But the important thing is when I inflate these together, the 16 inch balloon needs to go on the trigger nozzle and the 11 inch balloon needs to go on the secondary nozzle. So when I start inflating them, I wanna watch my 11 inch balloon and once it's full, pull it off the secondary nozzle, but keep filling that 16 inch balloon until it's full and then pull it off the trigger nozzle. And just like we did with the 11 inch balloons, I'm gonna slowly let air out of it until they're nice and round, press them down against the table, and then tie them together into a pair. I'm just gonna repeat these steps until I've got all of my 11 and 16 inch balloons inflated and tied into pairs. Next, I'm gonna inflate our tiny clusters. In each of these balloons, I'm gonna to inflate to three pumps of air each, or they're around three, three and a half inches in size. Because there's so many of these, I'm gonna fill one balloon and hold it under my ring finger against the pump, inflate the second one to the same size, and then just like we did with our larger balloons, twist the nozzles around twice and tie them into a pair. Once I've got my first pair made, I'm gonna do the exact same thing with a second pair, bring those two together so that the nozzles touch, and then twist one balloon from each pair around each other, and that will lock it into a quad. I'm then gonna do the same thing with my purple and silver balloons until they're all into quads. Now these little quads are gonna be tied into the arch at the end, and to tie those into the arch, I'm going to cut up this white 260 into three parts. So I've got three to four inch long segments, and I'm gonna tie this little bit of 260 into each of those quads, and that's gonna make it super easy to tie those little clusters into the finished arch. So I'm just gonna take the end of one of those snippets of 260 and tie that directly to one of the nozzles from each quad. The last part we need to prepare are the 260s that will tie all these balloons together. And the first thing we wanna do is remove all the air from these 260s. So I'm gonna stretch it between my two fingers, pressing all the air out of it before tying the nozzle of that to the end of the next one. And I'm gonna daisy chain three of these together in the same way as I found three of these tied together was about as much length as I could manage at one time while twisting the balloons together. Although once I started assembling all the balloons, I did end up tying a fourth one onto the end of this chain to finish off that total length. 
Now we can start assembling all our balloons into sections. So I've got my 16 inch pairs and my 11 inch pairs within easy reach. And I'm gonna take my first 11 inch pair and tie one nozzle from that pair to the very end of our 260 chain. And this will be the starting point for our section. As I continue to add balloons to this, I always wanna make sure that I keep my 260 chain nice and taut as I wrap it around balloons, as this will make sure all my balloons stay nice and snugly together. So on top of this, I'm gonna take one more 11 inch pair and put it directly on top of our current one in the opposite direction, making sure all of the nozzles touch. Then I'm gonna pull my 260 tight, wrap it around a balloon from the current pair, and then wrap it around from a balloon from the previous pair before bringing it back to the center and wrapping it around that same balloon again. This is going to lock everything together nice and snugly, and it means nothing will shift on me as I go. So I'm gonna grab one more 11 inch pair and do the exact same thing. Place it in the opposite direction with the nozzles all aligned, wrap it around the current balloon, wrap the 260 around the previous balloon, back to the current balloon, and then to the center. For every three to five 11 inch pairs I put on, I wanna add on one of my 16 inch pairs. And this means all of my 16 inch balloons will be evenly distributed throughout that section. I don't wanna get to the end of the section and realize I haven't used enough of my 16 inch balloons. So make sure you incorporate them as you go along. As I continue to add pairs to this, I always wanna keep color combinations in mind. So I don't want too many of one color next to each other as that kind of ruins the organic effect. So always take a good look at what you currently have tied in and make sure you're mixing up your color combinations as you go. Now this is going to be an indoor arch, and that means I don't have to worry about the colors or the sizes of the balloons I'm using. But if I were going to set this up outside, you want to be very aware of the temperature and location that you're going to be putting your arch. If this arch is going to be in sunlight, you may want to shy away from using dark colors because all of your latex balloons are going to get hazy or velvety in direct sunlight. And this is particularly noticeable on dark colored balloons. So if you're doing this outside, you may want to use only light colors or just know they're not going to be shiny after a little while in the sunlight. The second thing to be aware of is the temperature outside where your arch will be. If you're inflating these balloons inside in an air-conditioned room and you're going to be putting them outside in the heat, your balloons will expand once you place them outside. So always make sure you underinflate balloons if you're going to be taking them to a hotter location so they don't pop. After you've added your final balloon pair to the section, you'll take the very end of your 260 and wrap it in a figure eight pattern a couple times around the same balloons, and that will lock it in place so you don't have to tie a knot. My completed section stands between five and six feet long, which is not only a quarter of our arch, but is also the perfect length to fit in the back of my SUV. So go ahead and repeat these steps until you've got four of these in total, and then we're gonna prep them for travel. I'm using this continuous roll of balloon bag and it's basically one long tube that you can cut to the right length that you need to fit your balloons. I've used extra large trash bags which is great if you're doing small arrangements but for something this large I love using this continuous tube so I can cut it to the exact length that I need. I'm shimming each of my balloon sections into the bag, cutting it to the final length, and then tying both ends. And not only will this protect my balloons as I move them around, it also makes them really easy to handle as I can just grab the bag, shimmy them in and out of the vehicle, and stack them until I'm ready to assemble my arch. In addition to the balloons, I wanted to give you a glimpse into my setup bag that I'll also be taking along with me. I've got some extra balloons of assorted colors and sizes. I also have some extra white 260s in case I need some extra tie points. And then to inflate my balloons, I'll be taking my hand pump so I don't have to rely on my electric balloon inflator. I'm also taking a pair of scissors. You should never do any balloon project without a handy pair of scissors. I'm also taking some glue dashes. I don't intend to use these, but just in case I need to stick some balloons in place to cover a gap, they're always handy to have on hand. I'm taking some monofilament or fishing line in case I need to tie my arch to something to secure it in place. And this is doubly important if you're gonna be setting your arch up outside. I'll also be bringing a roll of duct tape in case I need to secure some pieces for the frame. And finally, I'm including a microfiber cloth. And this is really important because the balloons, no matter how careful you are with them, are going to pick up lint and dirt as you move them around and you set up the arch. So I always wanna make sure to have one of these on hand to wipe away any debris once the arch is set up. I'm gonna throw all of these into one of my trusty IKEA bags. And then in addition to all these things you see here, I'm also gonna be taking a step ladder with me to make sure I can reach everything properly. I've unloaded everything on site and now I'm gonna set up the frame for my arch. Now this is an arch frame that I DIY'd and I'll have a video tutorial linked below as well as written instructions. So if you'd like to have a pattern with all the measurements ready to go for you, you can check that out in the link below. Or if you join my Patreon at my party maker level, 
You'll have access to not only those plans, but my entire library of digital plans and recipes. So check those out in the links below. And now that I've got the arch frame all set up, we can finally start adding balloons to it. I'm going to take my first section and set the very end of it on the base plate of my frame and then working my way up, I'm going to press the balloons around the frame. So the frame should go in between all of the balloons so that the central pipe of that frame is touching the 260 line that's attaching all of our balloons together. The closer that 260 stays to the pipe, the more likely our balloons will follow that arch shape. Now I'm going to take two balloons with the pipe in between them and I'm going to twist them around each other and this will lock the pipe between them. I'm going to repeat this twisting process every couple of feet across the entire arch and then I'll make sure my balloons don't pop away from the frame. I'll follow this up by securing the next three sections of balloons in the same way we did the first one. The important thing to keep in mind though is when you add your new section, you want to make sure the balloons of that new section are touching the balloons from the previous section. If you leave too much space between the two sections, there will be a noticeable hole in your arch. So do your best to really snug those up between each other. Once all four sections are secured to the frame, it's good to take a step back and look at the arch as a whole. You want to look for any gaps in between balloons or too many balloons of the same color right next to each other. I noticed a hole here so I inflated two extra 11 inch balloons and secured them in just by twisting the nozzles around a balloon that was already in the arch. And now is when we can add in those tiny clusters we made earlier. So anywhere I've got a hole or too much of the same color, I'm going to take one of those clusters, set it where I want it to be, and then I'm going to stretch out that 260 tail that we tied to it earlier and wrap it around a balloon or two really tightly. The friction of that stretched out 260 will be enough to hold that cluster in place. This stuff is up to a lot of your artistic eye. I know that I'm going to be using about three clusters for every six feet or every quarter of the arch, but beyond that, it's really up to how you see the arch, how it's being viewed, and any holes you might want to patch up. So go ahead and continue to add all of your clusters in, play with the balloons until you're happy with them, and then as a final step, I'm going to go over the entire arch with my microfiber cloth anywhere I see any dust, hair, or lint. This step will give your arch a crisp and professional appearance. And now, this arch is ready for your party or event. I hope you're inspired by today's project and this demystifies some of the planning and making parts of an arch like this. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe below, and don't forget to check out our Patreon group if you'd like to up your party planning game. So until the next time, you can check out some of my other videos over here. And remember, stay creative everybody! Bye!